It's very, very hard to build muscle with low testosterone. It's also very hard to lose muscle with high testosterone. So you'll see with like athletes and stuff that use testosterone and diet, they'll be able to preserve muscle. Anyway, the reason why I'm saying this is when your body is trying to build muscle, it'll take its hormones and organize it in a way to do that. Mm -hmm. And part of that is raising testosterone and making the testosterone more available, meaning more free testosterone, and also increasing androgen receptor density. And also, this happens as a direct result of building muscle, increasing insulin sensitivity. Uh, muscle is a very insulin-sensitive tissue. It stores carbohydrates as well, uh, and it, it'll, it has a profound effect. One of the easiest ways to optimize your hormones is to simply Lift weights, build muscle. The process of building muscle organizes your hormones in a way, or it tends to at least, in a way to build muscle. What does that mean? Higher levels of anabolic hormones, better insulin sensitivity, a better balance of estrogen and progesterone, higher testosterone in men. So again, if you want to optimize your hormones, start lifting weights to build muscle, get stronger, your body will do that. How, Great equalizer. How fine of a dance do you think this is? Oh, well, you overtrain. It goes in the opposite direction. That's what I mean. Yeah. So, like, do you, you like, is, is it a very fine line, you think? Like, do you think that, like, everybody has... It's the difference has between building and, and not building, right? So, if your body is is building muscle and getting stronger, the way, part of the way it does is, is it takes its hormones and it, it, it changes them and modifies them to do so. Same thing with losing muscle. Like, if you overtrain or let's say you just do tons of cardio and you starve yourself... Your body will also organize its hormones in a way to pare muscle down, right? To slow your metabolism down. So, so if, again, uh, getting healthier generally optimizes hormones, but only strength training has been shown across the board to have this effect. And it doesn't just have this effect on hormones. It also increases the amount of androgen receptors that you have available, which is what the like testosterone attaches to. So it's literally, it's like your body is like, let's become anabolic and give you a youthful hormone pro profile so we can build some muscle. You know, I, I've understood this for a really long time, but never did I feel it until I went through that whole coming off of steroids from after competing. You oh, know, for, right. Where I, I consistently took testosterone, synthetic testosterone for like almost five years there, like nonstop, no breaks, five years straight. And then I, and then I came off. And even though I didn't cut cold turkey, even just, you know, weaning off over the course of five, six months and then going to nothing uh, for probably six months, I would say. And I remember I talked about it on the show, so you can go back and listen to me sharing that journey. But I uh, I remember like being so unmotivated to even lift and it was just like, oh, I just I felt lethargic. I felt tired all the time and like going to the gym. Like, I lost my love, my love to train even, you know. And, but I remember, boy, if, especially if I did things like squatting or deadlifting, like a big gross motor movement. And, and if I just did that too, it didn't even have to be a great big workout, but I did that. I would feel like how much better my hormones would feel the next 24 hours yeah, after that. Saying that. And then I would feel it go back down again if I was consistent. And then I, if I do it again, I'd feel it. So um, I never had, had felt that before until I, it was so low. So, I mean, I've known this for a long time. Um, but that really highlighted to me like how powerful that is. Yeah, I've had clients actually measure this where, um, you know, I, I would have some clients that would hire me that would be really up to date with their blood tests. So, you know, they were just, they were into health and they would know, well, here's my normal hormone profile. Here's what's going on. And um, I can count, I want to say maybe four clients off the top of my head, male, who they knew what their testosterone were at baseline levels were uh, normally. Then we started strength training and they would see an increase of like 30, 40% in their testosterone levels Which and they would ton. trip out. That's a ton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they would trip out. They're like, well, this is so crazy. It's just the weights. And I said, yeah, you're just, you're just building muscle. Yeah. The process of building muscle really, it's like directly parallel to that, uh, optimizing your hormones. Like they both, um, uh, uh, require the adequate amount of recovery yep. that, you know, the stress has to be managed appropriately. <clears throat> the entire, like you might be well fed, you gotta get sleep. Like, so all of that, like, it, that's why I think just focusing on building muscle, a lot of times it kind of takes care of itself uh, yes. at the end of the day. Yes. Now, what, what's your theory on tools? Like, you know, let's say like, a, you know, juve red light, like to do that, because I, I remember uh -huh. I was, I was like throwing the whole kitchen sink at, uh, trying to get my hormones to oh, kick yeah. back up naturally, right? So I, I did that too. You had me on a supplement stack that I was taking. I mean, obviously I was trying to optimize sleep. Like, 
Um, I was doing a lot of different things. And I remember I became very motivated to use the uh, the red light when I got a message from our friend, um, uh, Metabolic Mike, right? His Instagram handle is Metabolic Mike. Mike Mensel, I think. Is Munsell. Munsell. Munsell, sorry. Uh he uh he did a like a test on himself right he got it he went and got his blood work done got his hormone levels checked mm -hmm. and then he did this protocol consistently with the red light therapy and he saw a dramatic increase he saw like this i mean i, I want to say he was somewhere in the uh 3 to 400 range and he jumped all the way up to 700 and something from it and so he sent that privately to me and said hey you know i i know you guys talk about red light he goes, but I've I've actually tested this on my for my testosterone. You should mess with it. It works. It, it, I mean, this is documented. It's <clears throat> documented that it works and raises testosterone. Uh, nothing's going to compare to the process of uh, of building muscle and improving your health um, through exercise, right? Nothing's going to com com compare to that. But if you combine it, yes, you see an even more pronounced effect. Well, I, and how much yeah. different, Sal? Because I, I agree with that statement. At least that was my experience, right? Because I was doing everything, and yeah. I nothing I felt more than having a squat day or a deadlift, deadlift day. And how much of a difference does it make uh, doing a, a session like that, that is a heavy compound lifting day versus let's say a circuit training uh, workout? Oh, big. Because it's the, it's okay. So think of it this way. Okay. <clears throat> think about how hard it would be for the body to build muscle with low testosterone, right? We know we, we you know, we, we work with a, a hormone clinic. In fact, if you're in, you know, people can look at it at mphormones.com. And you'll hear the reports and people are like, I just couldn't build muscle no matter what. Everything's a grind. And they had medically low testosterone levels for whatever reason, couldn't raise it up. So they had to use uh, medication. But then once they went on, it was like everything works. So it's very, very hard to build muscle with low testosterone. It's also very hard to lose muscle with high testosterone. So you'll see with like athletes and stuff that use testosterone and diet, they'll be able to preserve muscle. Anyway, the reason why I'm saying this is when your body is trying to build muscle, It'll take its hormones and organize it in a way to do that. Mm -hmm. And part of that is raising testosterone and making the testosterone more available, meaning more free testosterone, and also increasing androgen receptor density. And also, this happens as a direct result of building muscle, increasing insulin sensitivity. Uh, muscle is a very insulin-sensitive tissue. It stores carbohydrates as well. Uh, and it, it'll, it has a profound effect. I mean, they've done studies on obese people where they have them build a little muscle, new, lose no weight, just build some muscle. And we see improvements uh, in their insulin sensitivity. Wow, Doug, you actually found the post? Yeah. So he did this uh, for 70 days with the Juve Light. It was 70 days? 70 days, 10 minutes a day. He went from a 501 to 902 yeah, in that's testosterone. Big, that's a big jump. Wow. Huge. Almost He went double. to the upper limit of where you would be. Doing Apple. everything the same, just added the red light. And yes. Next. Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, and, and, now that's that's one person, right? Right. Of course. So, sure. I mean, it's interesting. Results may vary. I mean, he look at it. He talks about how skeptical he was. Well, uh, the the studies on it show that it works. It it, it definitely works, and the way it works, yeah. it, it also helps regrow hair and it improves the texture and the look of your skin. It speeds up recovery. So now someone's like, I guarantee people are like, what is this? Magic or what this is crap, yes. right? Yeah. No, the way it works is red light literally, it first of all penetrates your body and it gets your mitochondria to, to be more efficient, efficient, effective. So the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. And if mitochondria works well, the cell works better. If mitochondria works not so well, you become sicker or you age faster. So if you shine red light on, let's say, light egg cells, which are in the testes, which help produce testosterone, <clears throat> now they're going to produce more testosterone. If you shine it on your scalp, the cells that produce hair will now produce more hair or thicker hair, for example, or your skin will regenerate faster. So that's what red light does. By the way, it's been around for decades, and we have study we have studies going back to the seventies right. showing its effects. So it's not this new crazy thing. What's new about it is that They've now improved on it. Well, and also now you have commercially available red light panels Units. for your house. Yeah. Well, what I keep thinking about like how many different variations of colors and things they've experimented with and like why they, how they even like stumbled upon red light as, as promoting these types of uh, uh, benefits because it's just like so, such a random thing to, to shine uh, red light on, on your body and get that kind of like response. It, is, well, it started with space. Uh, mm. So they, they, they tested different um, all the radiation types of light radiation mm -hmm. on plants and space to see uh, what would it. Yeah, so it's not just red light. So if you buy a red light bulb, you know, it makes your room <laughs> red. That's not the same thing. It's not going to work out for <laughs> you. No, it's a specific spectrum and, and you know.
I'm going to give away the program that started it all. I actually created Maps Anabolic 10 years ago. Still our top training and workout program. I'm going to give it away for free. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. Do all those things. If we pick your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section. You'll get free access to Maps Anabolic. Also, we got a sale going on right now. The RGB bundle is 50% off. That's Maps Anabolic, Maps Performance, Maps Aesthetic, all three programs plus free stuff. There's more free stuff in there, okay? That's 50% off. We also have an individual Maps program that's on sale, Maps Suspension. This is a suspension trainer workout program. All you need is a suspension trainer. You train your whole body, okay, with Maps Suspension. That's 50% off as well. If you're interested in either one, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code JULY50. That's July 50, with no space, for that discount. All right, here comes the show. Yeah. Is this the reason why the red light is in total recall? <laughs> I'm serious. No, no, I think Mars, that's Mars' dude. is red. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but they, yeah. I think they have a bunch of red lights, if I recall. No? No, it's because it's red. It's, the it's the lights Mars. that were lit up and some of that, they is weren't this, red? Is this what they mean? Is this what Rex, Roxanne had to do with the red light? What Roxanne, you don't have to put on the red light. That's a whole different <laughs> use of the dumb. red light. Total Recall, I figured it was a sci-fi show, so I figured that that was something that they included in there. Like no, so. it's not Juve. Uh, I, think, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know it wasn't Juve. It was the <laughs> devil before Juve. Sometimes they make, you know, like how uh, Matrix, like everything's kind of green hue. So you know yeah. they're in the Matrix? Yeah. So yeah. they do stuff like that where they try and like uh, create kind of an Dude, environment where it uh, all, you, like, yeah. oh, I'm in this environment. You just so took, it's kind of a red hue. You just took us down a, a rabbit hole. But man, you want to talk about, by the way, the remake of Total Recall sucks compared yeah. to the original. Original oh, is yeah, where it's at. Yeah. But the storyline is pretty wild if you think about it. Like the, it's in the future, yeah. and rather than paying for an expensive vacation, like mental vacation, you can pay for the memories. Yeah. So they hook you up, and then you you come out and you're like, "Wow, that was great," you know. But you didn't yeah. go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could totally see that being something people would pay I for. Totally. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come on, I totally see <laughs> that. So cool, Meanwhile, right? you're a Manchurian candidate when you you, you know get out of it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just they just like bark like a dog, and they're like, "Oh, yeah." You go oh, have oh, to shoot somebody. I've been buying more of these Bill Gates whatever things yeah. as a result. <laughs> Did you that my favorite scene of uh, of Total Recall? What's your favorite scene? I got I got two favorite scenes of that. You're trying to pin me to the <laughs> the three booby boobs. No, oh, no, come on, Holy, guy. You, you, I you forgot pinned, about that. You pinned yourself. Oh to that. man. Oh, I thought exactly. Like no, you were like, I forgot oh, about dude, that. No, he's just three, expecting you to know the lines. The he didn't look lady. at me because he knows I'm not going to know the lines. For I that remember. Movie. I forgot uh -oh. about that. The three boobs. Well, how can you forget how about that? How could you forget She takes her shirt. That's what I like. Every teenage boy's dream. You remember that, Doug? I do remember. Remember that oh, okay. actually? Yeah. Yeah. Did you get that poster in your room. <laughs> oh, I got, I got nine kids or, or whatever. Yeah, no. One, there's two scenes. One is when they when they fly out the airlock and they're on the ground, and then for oh, whatever reason, Arnold's face are, starts to get all weird. <laughs> yeah, he's so ah, shaking. Ah, his that eyes one, and then out. and also when they found yeah. Quato. Yeah, Quato. Okay, so I showed my, I told my my daughter about. So my daughter's twelve, about to turn thirteen. Yeah, and I was like, do you know who Quato is? Because she likes weird scary shit i told you guys you guys know this she's yeah, like yeah. she's into like she's 12 yeah. but she's i don't know she's way older than her age when it comes to this kind of stuff so we were talking about grotesque monsters and stuff and i said do you know who quato is yeah she's like no i'm like it was a character in total recall and it was a mutant that came out of someone's came belly of, okay so, <laughs> so like sci-fi horror that was another popular thread of sci-fi horror right remember all those other like even alien like where there's popping out yeah. at the diner and like coming out of somebody it, like there was always some kind of parasite or something coming out of somebody's stomach. Okay, like that was, did uh, you now, ever? Do you guys think theme. that that, that's, that always stems from like some it, 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 from something that was going on during that time, like in like science or like that was like news? It was article. in the air, some idea, and everybody was kind of had that same right, right. Well, uh, the in my opinion, the peak of these kinds of special effects, because then you got CGI, right? Oh, the yeah. peak of it was like. Point. 80s, 90s, and then CGI came in and it kind of now changed everything. It's totally, I guarantee it is a special effects thing from like that's you know, a good point. Guys. That's actually yeah. a really good thing. I mean, they like, use that's what you see that trend today still. Like, you always like somebody comes out with new cutting edge stuff, like Spielberg does yeah. something that no one's done, right? And then, like, the next yeah. 10 cool movies that are like that well, include that. Somehow. Well, like, like, yeah. uh, Alien. Mm -hmm. won so many awards, so iconic for the design of the actual alien monster head with the little mouth that Oh, yeah, out. and the little mouth. That was that a trip. Predator won awards. There was, a, there was a magazine. I didn't subscribe to it, but I'd read it when i go to the 7-Eleven. <laughs> what was that magazine that they would show like horror 
like uh, makeup artists and weird shit in there. Do you guys ever remember that? Yeah, it was like special effects. Don't look to me on that yeah, I've one. seen Justin it. Justin remembers. Yeah, it was I don't super metal. Come on. It. Yeah, it was hella metal, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, well, fact, I, I used to read name. that comic book, the heavy metal. Like, oh, yeah. That comic book where it's all sci-fi, yeah. like Conan looking people. Yeah, yeah. 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 But anyways, I I flip through it and you'd see these like these like Harry and the Hendersons. They won an award for that. Oh uh, really? Yeah, for the costume of uh, of Harry. Yeah, he was so expressive. Like they had like animatronic yeah. stuff on his Dude, face. Dude, go back in time. You see the first like award winning ones was uh, Planet of the Apes, which now looks silly. You look at it now, my kids make fun of it. But I'm like, this shit was good back in the day. <laughs> you have no idea. But like, it looks stupid. We can tell it's a mask. Uh, like we grew up with Alf. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the stupidest character of all time. I loved him. Yeah. I I read something I wanted to ask you guys about um, the other day. I forget which one. I'm reading a couple books right now at the same time, and I don't remember. Which one it was in, but I thought it was a really interesting stat that I'm like, I gotta ask the guys because th- th- I was I would have been off if I would have been asked. What percentage of men and women, both are different numbers, okay? So give me both, <laughs> fantasize about murder. Whoa. Everybody. Fantasize? Yes. Everybody, Fantas- right? <laughs> <laughs> you mean committing it? Is that no, one? Not dude. everybody, bro. <laughs> <laughs> See, maybe you would have been way more accurate. I was like, I haven't oh, fantasized no. about killing anybody. Just, <laughs> just, just, I just feel like everybody's had a thought. Just, dark like, thought dude. Just, like, just your dark ass, bro. <laughs> he's all. He's all. Uh, every, what do you mean, like daily? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like how often? <laughs> like, are we what are the about consequences? Here? You know, you kind of like role play this whole thing out. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. No, you guys, uh, come okay. on, dude. You guys aren't being honest. Yes. I, I have <laughs> never <laughs> listen. The reason why I brought this up was because the number was much higher than I would have thought. I've never thought. Of like, course, I've it never is, gone dude. through my mind and fantasized about literally. Murdering. murdering. So I've been so mad that I thought I could kill that person. Okay, so I, mean, I, 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 I never so do it, but it, you know the thoughts are like, mm, <laughs> you know, like. Okay, men and women are different. I'm not going to role play. He's about to to play. There is a percent. It's not a hundred. I've already been too honest (laughs) to tell you that. There is a difference. Men and women are different in this, okay? And there is a percentage. Well, first, let's guess who's more, men or women. Oh, I think that's obvious. You think so? Oh, okay. Well, no, go ahead. What do you think? Well, okay. I think that one's obvious. I think the obvious answer feels like men, but. The female mind is very mysterious, bro. I mean, you never know. <laughs> you never know, dude. Like conjuring, uh, it's all lives in there. Yeah, right? yeah so think, maybe it's not where, where are you at in the, the world. Say it men, lives in here. Sure. Yeah, men are higher. Mm, okay. Yeah, men, yeah, men, men are higher. Okay, what, what are the percentage? We're also doers, right? Don't we murder more? <laughs> well, yeah, we're I, we're more aggressive. We so to me, it would make us. sense that we would we would fantasize about murder more than the other. But I have re- I wrote down like all the percentages because I wanted to ask you guys this. Okay, so what do you think? What the per- Justin is re- leaning towards a hundred percent. What do you guys think the percentage? for men and what the percentage for women is. Oh 60, 40. I say okay. eight, at least 80 for men. It is men. 79. Wow. Boom. 79 for men. What do, you, what do you think women is? 60. Almost 60. A 58. Okay. Wow. Okay. That, now here, here, here we go. about right. Now let's take it a step further. The what do men what what do men fantasize about murdering and what do women fantasize about murdering? as far as the, what type of people like who are they murdering uh, yes who are they okay, murdering? husband oh. yeah, what men what, men, <laughs> what, it. What, what, what would men are men fantasize about killing their like ex wives or their uh, or nope it's not that girlfriend? okay <laughs> yeah. boss mm. uh yeah. Yes, their boss. boss. That's okay. So there's there's two for men. Men, oh, Kyle, I'm, we're watching you. I'm buddy. looking at my employer. Men, right men are strangers and coworkers. Or what they they, uh-huh. they strangers? Yes. Why would you fantasize about killing a stranger? I, I know that's weird. What the hell's that, wrong with you, Justin? I was all weird. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't claiming that one. That's that's left only field, people dude. he knows. Yeah, yeah. I just, just yeah, people I real close that I'm fast, just like. Mm, they only okay. fantasize about killing hey, real people. Hey, get ready for this one. Yeah. Though. What do you think women are? Their husbands. Family members. Family, family members. members. Yeah. Family oh, members in general. They're kids. Dude, that's dirty. <laughs> dude, yeah. Oh, and God, then what is the most common between the two sexes? Oh, I don't know. Uh, like an infidelity cheated step parents person. Oh, oh step parents. Wow. Okay. wow. Yeah, like mother, yeah. mother in laws. Hey, those those or, porn sites would have yeah. you believe otherwise. I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they were trying to kill them. I always thought they were trying to sleep uh, with them. Crazy. Really? Yeah, yeah. Boy, people are weird. That's this is crazy. why when AI robots come and they they look like humans and they're kind of hard to distinguish between humans and robots. That is going to highlight. We're going to see the depravity of the human mind. Bro, People are going to do weird shit to these poor robots. The whole, you're talking about AI. It's and and you guys know about what they've uh, uh, been alarmed by recently with Google. Yeah, and and how NASA actually, you know, was was. Um, I, I think they they put out the warning, but um, they were they were trying to describe this AI algorithm as like its own. It's it's basically like a, it's an alien because it d- thinks differently. Like it's it's its own thing, wow. So it's like if you think of it not in terms of like the human mind, 
it's its own way of processing, thinking, acting. Like it's dude, just going to be a totally different dude, thing. Creating real self-aware AI or the attempt is to me a perfect example of the painfully, the, the, the painful and dangerous narcissism that humans have. Why yeah. am I saying that? We don't even know about We're the human arrogant. mind. We don't even know the human mind. We know more about the universe, about the universe millions of light years away than we do about our own minds. Yeah. And yet we're going to try and create a self-aware machine. <laughs> well, we're in a rush that to no create. We don't know what with, we're creating. Yeah, we're just in this mad rush to create. And it's like, we we don't even think about consequences anymore. It's just like, who can do it first? Yeah, and then weird shit's going to happen. But I, like I think, like I said, we create these robots. It's going to be weird, bro. People are going to, are going to buy robots to kill them. Gonna See, buy I don't. I, I don't think it's. I, I don't think that weird. What I think is going to be really interesting because I do, and I do think that we will get close to it in our lifetime. That we are going to be able to automate so much and and have these robots do so much for us that literally you we won't have to do much. That we will. That m m people will be able to have these robots do most of the yeah. labor and the work for us. We lose our way, and we're going to have three D no printers. Purpose. We're going to be able to have most of everything we want, and we're going to have this like you're total. Not gonna, you're not going to own anything, and you're going to love it. Well, <laughs> thanks, World Economics. Or you'll have everything. Yeah. yeah. So maybe you'll have every. Maybe you. Maybe it's all not you so need is the barcode on your forearm, and you can have everything. And I and I, what I think is going to be and, most and interesting is name, like Murdoch or how. Or how Moloch? much higher depression, Moloch. suicide, yeah. and all those things are then even more so compared oh, I to think now. It'll, I think anxiety. When we have yep. all these things that everybody thinks they want so bad, and then we get them, and we innovate, and we get there, and it's like we're more unhappy than we ever of were. Of course. You sure. know what a shitty... You know I love, that's why I love that. You share that uh, that one... Um, that one show, what's it called, that you just brought up the other day again? Twilight Zone. Yeah, Twilight, Twilight Zone. Zone. That one episode where the heaven and hell one. Yeah. I just think that's such a great announcement. A, a so that's so long ago, right? That show's like 30 years old or something oh, like that. Way one. older than that. Yeah, yeah, super old show. And to think where we're at now, it's like, whoa, we people are in, in our lifetime may potentially be able to have I, I don't, most You things. know what's funny? I, and anybody who wants to argue <laughs> with what you're saying, so essentially what you're saying in a nutshell is we're going to get to the point where we get everything we want and then we're going to realize... We're still unhappy, still anxious. What the hell's going on? For anybody who needs evidence of that, just look at now. Mm -hmm. It's way easy. Life is easier now, objectively, than it was 70 years ago. Yeah, okay. And right. And a, poor, and a poor person today has significantly more than a king or a queen did, you know, <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Yes. Just because it wasn't available. Right. But look at anxiety, look at depression, look at unhappiness. It's higher today than it was then. How do you reconcile that? Right. So it's just going to keep happening. People are going to keep getting what they think they want, and they're going to realize that that's something's missing. So to me, that is self sabotage. That is going to be the craziest, most interesting, and most talked about thing when we get to this. I I think I like to think that we're going to be self aware enough as we as we make because it's inevitable we're going to make some dumb mistakes with AI along the way, and <laughs> hopefully you know, none of them kill us. Well, I mean, and I think that before it gets like a, like a, your crazy, scary sci fi movie, we'll be smart enough to not allow that to happen. So I, I think that's a little tinfoil hat for me. But I do think... Although I got to point out that we do have robots that were engineered to basically consume all organic matter on the battlefield, meaning they consume what? dead bodies. What? What? Yes. We that, made a robot like that? Yes. Why? What? Exactly. Why? <laughs> what? And, and what do you think? That, <laughs> that scares the shit what? out of me. What? That's what? What did up, you dude. get that? What? Where did you That's get that? That's real, dude. Look at a up. robot that goes and eats dead bodies. It, yeah, it like consumes it, it organic consumes matter. Consumes organic matter, meaning it, yeah, it cleans up the battlefield and 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 it's powered by like organic material. Wow. What? Yeah, you need to fact check this. Doug. Yeah, this is fact, crazy. Fact Listen, check me. Doug, Justin has never. He's every time I'm he's always right, weird dude. up. Yeah, it's real. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. You guys, a thousand. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody doubts me. It's I, fine. I like saying that now. It sounds like I know what I'm talking about. With people. <laughs> he's batting a thousand. <laughs> That's like a hundred percent. I love except it when you use, throw sports. Okay. Terms except they don't use a hundred. It's here. Thousand it is my favorite. It's here. it's here. This robot's called energetically autonomous tactical robot, also short for eater. E A T. Dude, <laughs> what the hell's wrong with these people? <laughs> wow. It does indeed power its biomass engine by digesting organic material, but that it is not intended to chomp its way through battlefields. Oh, of it's not intended, yeah. Yeah. soldiers. <laughs> So there's the tinfoil hat part, right? That's the part. That's yeah. weird, though. So what is the purpose of this? It's thing? a little it's bit alarming. To, if it's no? not to eat d dead bodies, like Justin thinks. What is it supposed to do? 
Well, it says it's actually a, a vegetarian. What's that all about? Uh, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I got to. Oh. I got to read it's in so deeper. Peaceful. It's yeah. such a peaceful robot. It's yeah. A we'll read when did up you a hear bit. about this? I didn't, I, I've dude, never heard of this. It's random. I don't even remember. It just just popped in when we were talking about this. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't know right. why. How has someone not made a sci fi movie around that? Oh, I know. Ooh, I feel like that's, that a, that's like a sci fi movie like waiting, one waiting to happen. Yeah, yeah, waiting to happen for I don't sure. Know. Especially if it runs off of organic material. Like you could. Yeah. We're going right. to. What was the that? Zombie one? Uh, uh, robot. What was that one movie? Was it iRobot? The one with Will Smith where the robots, and the number one rule, like a long time ago, scientists came up with the rules. Like you would give AI machines and robots to prevent them from. Yeah, hurting you know humanity, and one of them was they must never hurt a human, never harm a human, yeah. always protect us. And then in iRobot, wasn't it there where the robots they figured, oh, the best way to protect humans is it's lock for them for themselves, lock them in the house. Yeah, that yeah. is iRobot. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's iRobot, which is brilliant because that's true. If you were an AI machine and you did look at humanity, you'd be like, well, they're they're the biggest risk to each other. Quarantine them all. Yes. Lock you guys all up. And don't worry, we'll give you all the video games and heroin you want. You'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That's crazy. All right. I, now that we're scared, I'm going to take yeah, us. Yeah, bring us back up. I'm going to yeah. take us to, I don't know if this is up, down, I don't know if whichever. But have you guys seen this This. <laughs> There's new bikini bottoms that they're coming out. <laughs> <laughs> this is much better conversation. Oh, listen, this I have. Seen I gotta it. send this picture. Tell them the okay. little triangles. Uh, so I tried to come up with a term for this. The little uh, itty bitty you, things. You go ahead it's, tell uh, them. it's like we'll call it taco floss. Taco That's floss. So, <laughs> so oh taco my god, floss. bro! You didn't just call it. That. I did. did so the bottoms of the bikini. Yeah. So we have thongs. I thought, thought you were supposed to keep this guy in check, though. So we have. So I can't. You just can't. So we have. We have thong bikinis. We've had that for a long time. Like this, so, like that. The, the, can, the term makes sense. Yes, yeah. like that, bro. Like, that. Yeah. like you can see, like the thong bikini. All the bunch has like, examples <laughs> yeah. ready to go. <laughs> I'm a, why are you I'm, a, I'm a bikini hey, connoisseur. Why is it a picture of you wearing <laughs> I'm a, it? Though? Yeah, I'm a bikini connoisseur. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so anyway, it, yeah, we know the thong covers <clears throat> just the crack, and you got the whole cheeks here. Now the front, they're trying yeah. to get small and smaller to where like. What are you gonna? What's gonna happen? Is this here? you complaining right now? Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, I got daughters, bro. Look so you got look cheeks. That. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. So you got if cheeks. She, now if you got she lips. takes the wrong step, or moves the wrong way, or anything aside from standing there, what do you call it? Though I'm you're gonna curious. You're gonna get side lip. There's nothing you can well, do about I, it. <clears throat> I'm not mad at it, but you know. I mean, okay. So there's another way to look at this too. Like, how? Where are we okay. going with this? What I'm saying. Like, okay, okay, yeah, I don't know. Well, you brought it up. Maybe, I'm, maybe we're going I'm back. Not, I'm not hating. It. <laughs> no, we're not. Bro. Maybe we're going back. There's I mean, we, okay. Let's be <laughs> let's be really honest. Okay, if the opposite is if you were to really covering think, all if the, we, the ankles. If we are a bunch of uh, apes that have evolved, the fact that we put a bunch of clothing on ourselves that's colored and expensive, and that's fucking weird. It would be more normal for us to walk around naked. Mm. So why? By, so what is what logic, is what per, other than keeping warm? Is gonna okay, where if you live somewhere like California, okay, we're fine. Well, okay, so this is a good this is a good discussion. So, so when you look at cultures across the world, modern <clears throat> hunter gatherers, for example, um, what's almost always universally covered is male genitalia, almost always. So even in 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 cultures where you see the women are almost fully nude, except they make sculptures. Of the, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So what? The, the, the penis is like covered. A penis. Why? Because when men become aroused, it's clear, and yeah. so it's probably better for society. Like you're with your you're with your tribe, and you know Bob's <laughs> excited. Your right bu yeah. your yeah your buddy's <laughs> wife walks in, and <laughs> everybody's like, "You're looking at my wife." No, uh, <laughs> something's I'm going totally on. Totally not bro. attracted. I swear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah, but you know what's funny is like back then, like when you talk that far back, it's like a sheet, uh, like a sheet. You know? It's like <laughs> it's a, just a banana leaf. Yeah, it's, it's like, like a little Whoo! banana hammock. Like that was good. As, they get a no, I think, they, I think they cover the whole thing, right? Did they? I don't I, know. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Doug, look up uh, modern hunter gatherers <laughs> yeah. loincloth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Know, We're fixing Doug's Google search again. He's got he's got all kinds of weird shit on his. No, but that's always covered. Always covered. Yeah. And I think the other reason why I know that. I think yeah, I've never seen. I mean, I don't know. I've never seen National Geographic magazines. They used to read when I was a kid. Yeah. They never showed dudes uh, with their dongs out. It was always that part was always definitely covered, and then women almost always covered the bottom mm -hmm. as well. And I think it's because we're self-aware, and 
enough to be so like, I would think that would be like a, a cleanliness thing because you would not want to get anything like dirt and stuff yeah, like that or like bacteria in your genitalia ticks and mites you yeah know. yeah so to me that's those are your re- reproductive like <laughs> your, you don't want to get you don't want that to be and so I think you would just put the bare minimum to cover it and protect it that's what the logic I would think behind doing that I think it'd be less about getting a boner about your your buddy no wife. I think it's that I think wow. it's you, you don't really? want yeah because it's a visible it's, I don't think that because back in the days the tribes used to switch it up and stuff like that <laughs> you've read sex and on, haven't you? Hey, man. They used to all. They all. That's their theory. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's. A, I mean, I think it's. A, I think it's pretty strong. That that's what the. That's what you. No, to I think. You, I think it because it's so visible. It's such an obvious. Remember when you're going through puberty? You, you imagine you didn't cover yourself. How embarrassed you'd be all the time, Adam. I, well, see, I don't think that's because of where we're at now. You don't even be embarrassed if you're. I think so. If you if you didn't know any better, if everybody in your community Everybody's was naked all the time, yeah. so I don't know. I, I, maybe we're just going backwards here. You know, maybe we're getting back to that. Hmm. <laughs> just covering up the, Obviously, bare, the bare minimum. What are we doing? I think that's what's going to happen. We're going to go. There's not going to. There's nowhere else to go. Is all I'm trying to say. Yeah. So what's the next to be? I mean, is this really like out at the beach, or is this just like oh, yeah. a lingerie thing? No, no, no. You no, see no. It, you Listen, see it. really, like that? Oh, I don't well, know. I've never I mean, seen you're it. not going to see that at probably your normal. I mean, you're going to see that in Vegas South for beach. damn sure. Oh, Vegas, South, South Beach, South yeah. Beach. South, yeah, maybe yeah. those two places. Hey, look, I'll tell yeah. you what, dude. Let me ask you guys this. Okay, we're all we're all forty or a little older. Yeah. Let's, when let's we were kids, that. did you ever see a g-string thong at the at the beach? Never, 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 never. Yeah. Do you see them now? I see them like when I go to the creek. Yeah. Yeah. So Whatever now you see them all over the place. Yeah. What I always find interesting is this is also the, always the girl too gets mad at the guy for like objectifying her too. Yeah. Or staring. Or like yeah. too long just staring. Yeah, it's like uh It's ah, like I mean that's sorry, that's the that's the part that I that. find interesting. Bro, about I saw this, this that's hilarious like, meme. It's kind of fair. I saw this <laughs> this hilarious meme where there was this this woman and she it was a cartoon. So and she's wearing like a low cut uh shirt or whatever. And she's like, you know, don't stare at me or whatever. So then the guy shows up the next day and he's wearing jeans, but yeah. they're low cut. So you can see like the you can see like the neck area or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see the girls trying not to look. Yeah. He's like, don't look at me. Yeah. <laughs> that should be the new trend. Just dude sagging it, you know, yeah, just yeah. Yeah. about that far. Never. It'll never be I'm, in style, dude. Actually, I'm, Europeans, I'm not even promoting that. Europeans have been wearing Speedos forever. Yeah. That never that, that style never made it here. Thank God. Did it not? It, it yeah, it did, didn't it? Who wears Speedos? In the seventies, Doug? <laughs> I can't speak to that. No? You didn't go through a Speedo phase? I did not. I feel like you'd be a big Speedo guy. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, not no, a big not one. So much. Just on occasion. I feel <laughs> like swimmers are notorious for that. Short shorts. I'll do the short shorts sometimes. I thought, I thought I in the nice 70s, closet. I thought Speedos were popular. No? I mean, I think there no. may have been a period. Dude. I don't I don't know. Know. Okay, yeah. my dad wore Speedo to the beach because he grew up in Italy. Courtney's dad wore Speedos and that was yeah. awkward I don't me. think you wouldn't. No, I ain't wearing a fucking speedo. Oh, I think you would be easily convinced. What? Yeah, I think if I rolled <laughs> why, up, why I think if think I rolled up in a speedo, I think I could convince you. If you had a speedo, <laughs> yes, I totally think I could. Tell me well, you don't, I don't think I could convince you. Oh, you got one. Oh, yeah. Hey. yeah I Goes t- right back to the car, dude. Yeah. Finally, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. just so happens to have one in the club box. Uh, <laughs> oh, so, <it's> party? <laughs> yeah. No way. He has one. Uh, no yeah. way. Dude. I totally think I could one in the in the hopper waiting. Convince me. Try. <laughs> you think you're that good of a closer? Purple. You're just playing hard Come to get on, right man. now, dude. Don't play that with me right now. <laughs> dare me, Adam. Yeah, dare me. <laughs> dare me. Dare me to do it. I dare you. Anyways, did you guys hear about the uh Somebody didn't wax. You're the one. <laughs> you're, that's true. Yeah. You're the one that brought up, Justin, the Georgia, what are they called? Guidestones? Guidestones. It was an explosion. Maybe- Bro, guys. okay, okay. So here's what's weird. So first off, Doug, pull up the Georgia Guidestones and what they say on them. Yeah, because it's it's weird about population control on some level, and then uh, it's weird shit. Yeah, weird. It's it's bizarre. I've it's heard in a couple stuff. Languages. I've heard there's some good stuff on there, and then I've heard there's like satanic stuff on. It's there. all so satanic. It's all satanic. Yeah, it's all like what you would consider. Not like outwardly, but like you know, control the population, and it's yeah. like stuff that people would say is satanic, right? Because the opposite of that is that uh, you know. Bear, be fruitful. Right? Yeah. Multiply. <clears throat> but anyway, there's a bunch of writing on them. It's kind of weird. Nobody knows who made them. Here's what's weird. It's one like of them the got ex- one of them exploded. And yeah, there's a video of it. Of it exploding. There's no video of, of who did it though. No. But there was, I guess, a silver car that was like close by in proximity. Well, it happened. And I, I was reading about it a little bit, and I guess they they're trying to claim that uh it was something to preserve it or like take it down. I'm like Whatever the explanation was was total BS. Well, so would, it made it even more would like. They do wouldn't it be pretty camera? obvious the person who got the video of it has something to do with it? Because who would video a bunch of stones that sit still and don't move? It's a security video. But oh, my point it's is a security video. Yeah, yeah, my point is, did they oh, turn it on when it blew okay. up and it was not on before? Why don't they see who did it? Who How do you know it was a security video? 
Because it looks like a security video. I don't think, bro, <laughs> I, it's out in the middle of like, I don't think it's a security video. I think it's a drone shot that somebody yeah. took. No, no, I saw it on I saw it on Twitter. Doug, yeah, first Doug. off, read what it says on security the Georgia Stone. Video. And then let's yeah, look at the video. Yeah, there's 10 different points. Number one, maintain humanity under 500 million people in perpetual balance with nature. Two, guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. Three, unite humanity with a living new language. Four, rule passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. Five, protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. This does not sound demonic. Sounds it like sounds, Democratic Party. No, no, no. no. Dude, sounds like the Democratic exactly, Party. <laughs> exactly. What it what it like the old bait and switch. That's dude. exactly what Satan wants you to think. Anyway, about. there's five more of those. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. No, yeah, I could read them or not. But we the whole post population control yeah. thing is just bullshit. I think we offended Doug because we yeah. cut him off. He was trying to read. <laughs> hey, I was trying <laughs> to read, guys. <laughs> what are the rest of them? Is okay. It? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> number six, let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court. Seven, avoid petty laws and useless officials. I like that one. Everything is Eight, world. balance personal rights with social duties. Nine, prize truth, beauty, love, seeking harmony. With the infinite. 10. Be not a cancer on the earth. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Stressing nature. That's the yeah. devil right there, man. Yeah. <laughs> I know. All I that know. all that beauty, love, and truth stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't I don't know. But but uh but with okay, now let's see if we can find the video of it get getting exploded. Okay. Uh weird though, right? Why don't they have a film like it's not a security film, Sal. Or else that would be the case. They would have it before. So too. then all I got to do is find the person with the, the who wrote. Recorder. That's what I'm saying. I think it's a drone that took that shot. And I um, can we pull the video up? We're so speculating we, so. Yeah, hard we right are. Now. We yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. We totally Just making are. shit up. It's a satellite footage. <laughs> <laughs> it could be that. I don't know. It, it looks like that. it's handheld. I'm trying to make sure we don't have this blast on our TV here. Uh, you can see the video, Doug. You can I, actually. I, I can see it. Yeah. Okay. Let, let us. I want to see what it looks like. It, 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 it's just a video of it exploding. I know, but I want to see the angle it's from so we can speculate if it's a drone or it's a satellite or it's a handy cam. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh shit. Oh, it's smoking and everything, right? Oh, we're getting an ad. Oh, here we Great. go. Commercial. Oh. You can tell a lot by what person looks like. On the Why don't internet, you do the, the NCI commercial while we're watching this commercial? Huh? Why don't you do the NCI commercial while we're doing this commercial? Oh, yeah. The company we work with that yeah. helps trainers become successful. Coaches. <laughs> Coaches. <laughs> no, they actually have a full ride scholarship. What? What do they got going on? They're going to give people free everything? Yeah. So this is, can you see the screen here? Oh, let me just r- navigate up here. Yeah. Okay. So this is what's included with oh, their shit. full ride that. scholarship. So they, so hold on. So do they enter, they go through our link to enter to win this? Yes. There's a page they need to go to and okay. uh, they'll win all of these different programs. So they get level one nutrition coaching specialist, level two nutrition coaching specialist, level, level one mindset wow. specialist, level one hormone specialist. Gut Health Masterclass, Women's Health Masterclass, Men's Hormone Masterclass, and Thyroid Health uh, Masterclass, plus Coaching Mastery. This would all cost $23,000, over $23,000, but you can win that all for free Wow! Yeah. as a coach. Wow, that's a huge deal. So nutrition coaches, fitness coaches, personal trainers should apply for that. Yeah, well, they're crushing. NCI is crushing. They're exploding, the amount of trainers and coaches that are going through there. Yeah, what a cool. Anyway, thing. did you guys see the video where it blew up? Yes, and it does different. look like a handy cam. It does not. That's not a security camera. Is that what? It's yeah, called? it's probably the person who actually did it. Yeah. took the video. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's what, what I'm saying. It. I'm saying like that. Okay, because obviously, who is videoing a bunch of rocks <laughs> that are that just sit there forever? That's a lame ass video unless you know something's about to go down and then you use it and you set it to go just viral. I don't know, yeah. man. I wonder if this is another one of those like sort of publicity stunt things. Like remember those uh, obelisks, those mere obelisks, oh, yeah. and yeah. then it became this. It was a movie. Yeah, it was it was promoting something. So I don't know that that would be where my thoughts would go because why would you like why what's the point of blowing it up i don't understand all i know is well i mean if someone thinks like sal it's some satanic thing it could be some right-wing nut that thinks he's got to blow it up well Uh, so not less satanic more like new world order stuff like so it's like the whole i mean economy my point is the same though so if it's new world order or whatever you and then some right-wing nut that should come over there and blow it up you know yeah Yeah, well i don't know All all i know is they turn on the large hadron collider and then that shit blew up that's it. There's a lot of weird. Did you guys know that there's also a stone in Japan? I want to say that's supposedly cursed because it contains an evil demon. Okay, so it's a stone. It's got writing on it, and it contains this evil demon. 
and it by itself, I swear to God, this recently just happened. Is this in that suicide forest? No, no. Oh, that's okay. weird too, though. Yeah. This stone by itself, which is part of this, this, the culture of this particular region, they've known about it for, I don't know, hundreds of years or whatever. Like there's a demon in that stone. Nobody touch it. It cracked by itself. Just recently happened. Ooh. That's right. Creepy. True story. Maybe Doug can find it. Yeah. Japanese yeah. demon stone crack. Demon that's stone. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know, man. Weird shit. Explain that. Doug, weird, weird stuff. <laughs> Doug, how are we doing on time? I want to talk about I want to talk about what's going on in the markets right now. Yeah, we're about 39 minutes okay. in. Oh, okay, we got okay. time for market stuff. Uh, so did you see what has happened with uh NFT sales? No. Will they drop drop by 75%. Oh, yeah, they're gone, uh, dude. They yeah. are gone. And we also we haven't talked about it because it happened while we were on vacation, but Bitcoin dipped to its lowest at 17, 17,000, yep. which I think it's hovering around 20 right now. What's the lowest they anticipate it going? Like, so the argument, so all, okay, all the all the Bitcoin junkies that are still hard up on cryptocurrency that I talked to believe that that was the bottom at 17. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that. No. I believe we're going to see under 10. I and, do too. And I think we're going to see. So here's the th here's the scary thing if you're if you're a crypto nut and you've been you've been drinking the Kool-Aid for the last few years. Well, I'm Crypto Carl and I is disapprove. that the one of the biggest arguments they used to make was it was a hedge against the dollar. Against inflation. Yes, against mm -hmm. inflation and 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 the dollar. If the dollar were to crash or go down, well, inflation's going up, the dollar's going down right now and so, so Bitcoin should be crushing. Bitcoin should instead be crushing it's crushed. and instead it's getting crushed right now, yeah. which that should raise that should raise a lot of concern. It's because they they were right. the, the utility of cryptocurrency still isn't great. They don't have it yet. Not yet. It isn't not great. It's, there's nothing. There's nothing. That, well, there's that's no, what I mean. It's not great, except maybe black market shit or whatever. Transfer of goods. You know, yeah. It's, it's all invisible. It's not that great. Um, And it was tons of... Look, did you see the chart? There's a chart that I saw when stimulus packages were kicking in, the amount of money, the, the amount of growth that crypto went through. Because people took their money and it speculated. Mirrored the, it mirrored the trillions yeah. of dollars that got yeah. pumped into the economy. So a bunch of people are like, let's buy crypto. We're going to make tons of money. And then you hear stories about the guy who made a million dollars. It was a complete speculative totally. market, yeah. just like, and I love comparing it to dot com because yeah. one of the things that your crypto junkies get all like butt hurt about when you start to argue with them about it is that the technology of it is going to revolutionize uh, like how we do things. Like in the they want that so bad they're going to just well, invest. It's true. In I, don't direction, direction, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. I think is Block, valid. But. Block, blockchain is revolutionary. Blockchain will change the way we do things in the future. Mm -hmm. I 100% agree with that. Do I think there will be cryptocurrency? Probably too. Yes, I do believe that. But that is like saying back in the dot-com era that you know which one of these companies was going to, you know, very few people knew that was going to be yeah, Google you know and Amazon. which going to be eBay. Or, yeah, yeah, there Amazon. was... Tens of th hundreds of thousands of companies that tried to get started at that time that everybody was throwing money at, yeah. thinking they were going to be the next Look, best thing. They think that by betting on a specific <laughs> coin, that what they're actually betting on is the crypto technology. It doesn't work that way. Okay, it's like yeah. saying, it's like saying dot com. It's yeah, the same yeah. thing. It's like, it's you, like money gets. It's like you Netscape buy, would be the. It is the like prevailing uh, search engine. It's like not. you throwing a uh, hundred thousand dollars behind dogs dot com because somebody bought the URL you URL the back in two thousand because you think the internet is going to change the way that we do business. And guess what? The internet did it, change. It did the way we did business. And dogs dot com did not mean shit back in. 2000 so right. it's the same concept exact same concept you betting on these coins that you think are cool or have a cool logo or attached to something it's like dude the likelihood that you're going to nail well, google or amazon and then the argument is like well bitcoin is the safest because it's the first and it's the most stable it's like you don't even know that because yeah. my argument to that i'd is, say it's a logical that's a i understand the logic behind it but still the odds i still will argue that here's how i'll argue that okay and I told you guys this off air the other day when we were talking about cryptocurrency is look at companies like Facebook, Google, and Amazon, which control more, more traffic and people the, than the digital any space. Yeah. Okay. Any yeah. other companies. Okay. Yep. And they also have, a, most of them have some sort of, some sort of uh, uh, goods and services or anything that they provide or sell. What is to stop them, which companies do this all the time for taking a loss to get more people and to release their coins. So example, what I mean by that, okay, uh, Duracell batteries and whatever is really popular and they are sold on Amazon, but then Amazon has their brand of batteries or whatever mm -hmm. on there too. Uh, and they have the power to undercut those those companies. They can literally put them out of business if they really, if that was their desired outcome. What is to stop Amazon from not creating its own coin and it has more power in, in Amazon store than Bitcoin yeah. does? 
and then it makes Bitcoin obsolete. Facecoin. Yeah. I mean, and yeah. it really does. And and then what is Facebook? Why Facebook could do the same thing, and so could Google, and so, and and who knows? That may or may not happen. But my point is that that's what makes even Bitcoin. Here's what's going to happen. I think I don't think any government is going. They're all controlled by the Fed anyway, and I don't think any government is going to allow any currency to compete with the Fed currency. No. So then, you know what cryptocurrency is going to come out that's going to last and grow? A federally a Fed, not federal. Because the Fed is not federal, by the way. It's as federal as Federal <coughs> Express. Yeah. But the Fed, the central bank, will release its own cryptocurrency. That's right. And, and that's the, the one. And the reason why. And it'll have all the backing of the U.S. military. 100% ag agree, agree with that. Yeah. And the reason why Bitcoin it being the first and is so popular right now is what I, if you go back far enough in this podcast, you can hear me being the one who was pushing about cryptocurrency the most. And it was because of the black market. Mm -hmm. The black market adopted crypt adopted uh, Bitcoin first, and that is what is where it's being used the most. Where it has the most utility is in the black market That's right, right now, and that might not go away until. And that may no. This is why if you got money to throw away and you want to put together like a like an emergency, you know, your earthquake kit or whatever you want to call it. You probably want to own a little Bitcoin because if shit hits the fan and you need to get something on the black market, let's say they make things illegal that you might need or whatever. Well, there you go. Other than that, I don't see any. But that is what it. has kept it afloat for this long. And then to your point about all of a sudden trillions of dollars gets pumped into the economy. Now everybody has this money to gamble with and all the rest of those bets were all speculative. All the rest of that money that gets pumped into there that drove it up like crazy are all people that aren't buying it because it has some great utility or they think it's we're the gonna future. See, we're gonna it's that they're all trying to buy it so they can flip it and sell it and make money. We're going to yeah. see a huge... We're going to see such a nasty crash with this kind of stuff yeah. because it was unregulated. Anything that's that quick, and that, that was the red flags for me from the get-go was like how many millionaires were coming out of nowhere for doing barely anything. Yeah, well, I mean, it was all speculation. And I think it's not regulated. A lot of people got ripped off. A lot of people lied to a lot of these places that hold your coin or whatever insolvent um, and you, and, or they don't even own it. They can't even give it to you if they wanted to. You know what I thought was an interesting point that David Freeberg made from all in podcasts that I thought was interesting because they all went around and they were talking their, their, their points about cryptocurrency and everything where it's at. And he's like, you know, I'm, you know, just an observer. I'm not an investor or anything like that. He's all, but the one thing that I find the most ironic about it is that it was, it's supposed to be this thing that's going to replace money yet we constantly measure and talk about it in dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if it's supposed to be this thing that has this great you, utility you can, that's, going use to, it. that's going to replace mm -hmm. it, then why the hell do we even compare it to the U.S. dollar? Yeah, because no. the U.S. dollar still has no. way more weight the than Fed, it has. The Fed's yeah. going to come out with their own cryptocurrency at some point, and that'll be the one. That'll be the one everybody I, I uses. 100% agree. Yeah. What are they going to call it? Fed coin. No, it'll, coin have, it'll have some NWO evil fucking coin. Name to it, bro. <laughs> some acronym that we don't find out. Luciferon. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's no. like, trade your, your, your devil tokens. <laughs> devil, devil dollars. Devil tokens. <laughs> hey, guys, go get your devil tokens. It really works. Yeah. Uh, hey, check this out. You got to look at this company called Olipop. So they make sodas like the ones you grew up drinking as a kid. Uh, to give you an example, they have classic root beer, vintage cola, strawberry vanilla, orange squeeze, cherry vanilla, uh, classic grape, tropical punch. Anyway, tastes amazing. But here's a kicker. This is a soda that's for gut health, okay? And it's only 35 calories, and it's all natural. So it's literally a gut health supplement. Help, it helps feed beneficial bacteria in your gut. It helps soothe inflammation. And, of course, it tastes amazing. You heard all those flavors. It's really, really good. And it's only 35 calories for an entire can. Go check them out, okay? And get a discount while you're at it. Go to drinkolipop.com. That's drink, O-L-I-P-O-P.com forward slash mind pump. And then use the code mind pump and get 20% off plus free shipping on your order. All right, here comes the show. Our first caller is Levi from Pennsylvania. Levi, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Um, first, you guys are awesome. Uh, I listen to you as often as I possibly can, but even whenever I'm feeling like unmotivated and not feeling the gym that day, just pop on the podcast and you guys get me where I need to be. It's, it's truly awesome. It really is. Thank you. Um, but I have, uh, I've been following a diet from another company, sorry, but go. I've, I found you guys on the podcast and I since switched over to, uh, the anabolic program and I was 
reading through the the diet uh the little diet guide that you guys include with like the beginner whatever one i bought um and it seems like there's like conflicting information and i feel like i'm actually slowing my metabolism down by what with what i'm doing so i have like 1900 cal or some sorry 2200 calories a day with like 150 grams of protein and uh based on some of the stuff that I've been reading and your 30 days of uh, advice that I found on your website, it seems like maybe I should be not sticking so strictly to specifically that and kind of fluctuating the intake to keep my, I guess my metabolism tricked. Um, and really all I need to do, all I'm trying to do is I have a, like a little bit of a beer gut, honestly, that's really all I want to get rid of and just kind of flatten it out and get in just more like, summer body right like i'm just trying to tone things up a little bit lose the the beer gut and kind of just gain a little bit of arm mass like i'm not trying to be a bodybuilder i, I just try there's it's really hard to figure out um like where to go right because there's so much everything i google everything i research there's a different answer there's a hundred different answers so just yeah. maybe like reverse dieting like i don't know what do you guys think yeah i see you asked all that on in your question i'm reading it right now it says do you have a guide on reverse diet we do so we we can do that we can help you there and i, I mean I, you're not in a bad place calorie wise although i would like you a little bit higher before i started to restrict calories from you it sounds i mean how long have you been following the 2200 calories 150 grams how long have you been consistent with this uh probably 4 months Oh, wow. And and little to no change in your waist? I'm, I mean, I'm losing weight, but I am I feel like I'm losing it in places I don't want to, right? Like my legs look scrawnier than they were. <laughs> like um, like I, in my face and my neck, like all that. I mean, I get that the stomach is like the last place that it goes and maybe that's what it is. But And, uh, and the other thing is that I don't care if I end up at 225 pounds, right? I'm not shooting for a, a weight. I don't even weigh myself regularly. I mean, I do, but not every day and I don't get all wound up if I'm a couple pounds up or whatever. It's, I really just want the look that I'm going for. I don't care what I end up weighing. There's a couple things I want to address, Levi. One is the conflicting information you find on Google. You came to the right place. We're about to give you the answers to your questions. So you don't have to go back to Google and read a bunch of conflicting stuff. So let's just consider what we're going to say now and let's just go with this and trust it. Number two you said you don't want to look like a bodybuilder. Don't worry, you won't, but you should still try to, okay? You should still try to because the more muscle you build on your frame, um, it, the better it is going to be for fat loss. And there's two ways you could deal with uh, with excess body fat. Uh, one way is to just try to lose the body fat. And the other way is to build muscle to the point where that body fat percentage goes down naturally because your weight goes up because your lean body mass goes up. Now, those are two extremes. Somewhere in the middle is usually what works best uh, for people. As far as the diet is concerned, it is better to fluctuate mostly psychologically. It's kind of a pain in the butt. It's not very realistic to always eat the same exact thing every single day. But we do see in studies that when people, if let's say they're on a bulk and they interrupt it with a cut, or if somebody's on a cut and they inter interrupt it with a short bulk, they tend to get better results. And it's not tricking your metabolism. It's just, uh, it's just, your metabolism is adapting to your lifestyle. If you eat the same amount of calories every single day, your body very quickly is going to adapt to that and learn how to just burn that many calories to keep you up maintenance. So what I think you should do with your 2,200 calories a day is I think you should go on a small surplus, maybe go up to maybe 2,300 calories, 2,400 calories. Do that for a little while. Build muscle, build strength. Slowly reverse yourself to the point where you get a decent amount of calories so that 2,200 calories then becomes an effective cut again. Okay. So you might want to wait till you get your calories up to like 26, 2700 calories with, with more muscle, with more strength. And then from there you can cut. And then the 2200 calorie cut shouldn't be ideally not every single day that way, but some days 1900 calories, some days 24, 2500 calories, ultimately leading to a general, um, you know, 2200 calorie average on a daily basis. So if you do the math over the week, you'll see that you're averaging about 2,200 calories, but some days are higher, some days are lower. So I hope that makes sense. How far are we in into anabolic right now? How, how far are you in? So that's the other thing is that it's summertime and I go camping a lot with my family and I can't always make it to the gym. I try to do my best to at minimum get the, the uh, foundational exercises with the, the straps. Um, I'm pretty good at that, but I haven't been doing it like to the T 
for probably a, a month. So are you getting are you are you getting at least three days of the foundational workouts, the the main workouts a week, or are you even missing that? I would say I miss it oh. more often than I get it. Oh, dude, oh step well, one, do yeah, that. Oh, okay. Well, then I mean, yeah, that's the the biggest key here is because it sounds like too. By the way, you made the case that you you're you're losing weight and you're probably leaning out a little because you're keeping your calories low, and there there is this like little psychological thing that happens when you're that when you're in a calorie restriction and you and it seems like you're losing weight, but then you're not really like your arms don't look as big. You feel like your legs are scrawny. A lot of that's because you're depleted. You're on it because you're low calorie right now, so you get that look. And this is a, a a normal phenomenon that you go through when you're when you're in a cut. So that's kind of a, a normal feel. But if you really want to accelerate your results, like being consistent with the lifting, adding the calories, like what what Sal's saying, to where you actually speed your metabolism up a little bit, build a little bit of muscle, and then go back to that cut again, still being consistent. That that's what's going to to change change this more than anything else. Oh yeah, and I mean you mentioned that you know your face, your neck, and and other places of your body are are you you notice a substantial change there. Like so that's I mean that's how it, it works for me even like that's just like it it's going to take a while before to to get down to to the stomach. I mean for the most part you just got to stick to the course and really focus a little bit more on muscle development, and that's really going to help in terms of like your. Uh, feeling confident with what's going on, yeah. especially when you haven't been very consistent. Yeah. I mean, the fact that you're you even have yeah. getting some of the positive results and feedback you're getting while being inconsistent is a really positive thing. Yeah, if you gain just like if you gained five pounds of muscle without gaining a single pound of body fat, you now are essentially leaner in terms of body fat percentage because you have more lean body mass and your fat mass has stayed the same. Versus trying to lose a couple pounds of body fat while preserving your muscle, which might be a little bit more challenging. I honestly think if you're just consistent with the strength training and you bump your calories up to like 23, 2400 calories, which isn't a huge bump, but it's enough to fuel some new muscle with the consistent strength training. I think if you do that for a couple months, I think you'll be very happy oh, yeah, with, with your results. I think, I think if you give yourself a real dedicated month, you'll see a difference. Yeah, I yeah. mean, follow anabolic to a T. I mean, make that a goal for yourself. Follow anabolic to a T for one month. Take your calories up. 200 calories or so like sal saying and i just you know get back to me get I bet some size on those arms and chest man it'll help a lot yeah you'll, that whole you know stomach issue okay that makes sense yeah you got that so you got maps anabolic so you're set there um you have the intuitive nutrition guide is that the one that no you have? reverse send them the reverse diet oh the reverse diet guide we'll send yeah, that yeah over send too. the reverse diet guide yeah let's do that yeah, I do have the intuitive one. All right. Well, we'll send you the reverse diet guide so you have a little bit more specifics in terms of how to take your your calories up higher while you're building. Okay. And cool. then just Thanks. and then just uh, stay in touch with us. Let us know as as your uh, progress as you go through this, um, because I think if you are just consistent with anabolic, add the calories like so. I think you're going to see a difference totally. just in that mm -hmm. alone. Totally. Okay. Cool. Yep. All right. Thanks for calling in, Levi. Cool, Thanks. Appreciate it. No problem. It, the the funniest phrase I will ever hear from somebody is, I don't want to look like a bodybuilder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I find it, it happen whoa, whoa, it's happening too I fast. I find it disrespectful when people say <laughs> that. so like, much. You know how fucking hard that was? <laughs> hey, guys, listen. <laughs> There's a reason why I don't anymore. Yeah. It's hey guys, listen, hard. <laughs> listen, I want to I want to play some basketball this is today. common perception. I'm not trying to become Steph Curry, okay? Yeah, so yeah, just yeah, everybody yeah, calm yeah. down. I, mean, you know, yeah. I don't want to play too much. Put too much work in I don't want to be a pro all of a sudden. Not going to happen, bro. But aim for that anyway. You'll get better results <laughs> if you aim for that anyway no i, I mean i get i you know i get what people mean though like so he's do i he's yeah. trying to describe his like his, his physique. goal yeah right. yeah my goal isn't to get that crazy he's not but, trying to go all extreme but your but, point is true though like it both both men and yeah. women even if your goal was not to look like a bodybuilder it's a very good goal to aim for because you end up with what you want yeah, yeah. yeah you're they, gonna look sculpted and strong yeah yeah, yeah. you're it's, not gonna look like a bodybuilder yeah. it's, it's real easy to stop <laughs> it's real easy to stop you know how hard it is to look like <laughs> you're like doing crew I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I said, calm down. I've never had a client come to me a day after working out like, you're fired. I told you. Oh my God, I'm Roddy Coleman. You yeah. fucked me up. Look at me now. It doesn't, doesn't work that way. No, but you know, if, if you just built, if you just focused on building and being consistent, I think people would be blown away. It's, look, this is happening to me right now. I, I, we were on vacation. I eat very low calories on vacation typically, and I usually lose a little bit of weight. Right now, I'm bumping my calories up. You know what ends up happening? I look leaner. 
I look leaner because the muscles coming up and the body fat's yeah. staying the same, which yeah. means my body fat percentage is now a smaller percentage of my overall body. Well, fat. I also think that what this highlights, and you know, <clears throat> clients were like this for sure. People really, really uh, overestimate <laughs> the how how the results should come. Yeah, yeah, it's dude. such a slow process. It really is, yep. and he's getting results. I yes. think I think that's what you know. He he wasn't really identifying that that's results. Like if you're if you're getting skin, like you're losing body fat in in other places of your body. Yeah, yeah. it's inevitable. It's going to get there. It's just you got to keep putting the work in, especially, especially the face. Yeah. Especially if you're being that inconsistent. Yeah, if yeah. you can tell me that you're missing more days than you're making, and right. yet you're still seeing some positive results, yep. we're, you're doing actually yep. pretty damn. You're yeah. actually lucky as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> It takes a lot of consistency on both diet and training to actually see little incremental results week over week. Yeah, even if he doesn't reverse diet, if he just lifted consistently, he would see. Yeah, so, no, yeah. you're right. That, you know, that'll be good. You just definitely. need somebody to tell him that, I think. Sometimes you just need that. You totally. Know? Yep. Our next caller is Eric from Ohio. Eric, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, uh, yeah, how's it going? Um, just the typical I want to start out. Thank you um, for all the information you guys give. A um, little background to start the um, question. Um, I've only been listening for one and a half months, but I listen all day, so I'm already about a little over 100 episodes through. Woo, hey. But, uh, yeah, I listen pretty much all day at work. Um, but a little more information. So I'm an avid lister. Um, I've gotten pretty big a couple times, but then something happens. Um, I've had two surgeries and like a depressive state that makes me like restart over after I'm down for around six months. But, um, so I enjoy listening and bulking and going to the gym. My main hobby is volleyball though. Um, I play anywhere from three to five days a week, year round indoor sand, um, is there any like workout and diet issue found to help keep my vertical up? I know you guys have heard this a lot, but I think there's certain times where I, I get too big for volleyball. Um, and I don't know if I've heard heavy lifting, uh, slows fast twitch muscles and nerves. Is that an actual thing? No, no, mm -hmm. no. Heavy lifting does the opposite. It, it speeds up. It, it builds fast twitch muscle. Maps first. cardio would be really now, good now, for him. Plyometrics is going to be your best bet uh, to to be able to express the speed with your muscle contraction. So I would do a little bit, you know, 10 minutes of plyos at the beginning of your workout. Heavy lifting isn't going to impede your vertical. Now, getting too heavy might. Well, I was just going to say, his question is not building his vertical. It's just not lose, losing his vertical. Yeah, that, that's a body weight thing. I guess it's... Both. Okay. I mean, if I could help my vertical as well, that would be great to get into playing. Well, it's a strength to weight ratio thing. Okay, so if you're if you're strong and light, you're going to have a better vertical than if you're strong and heavy, right? So that's a diet. Uh, that's more of a diet thing than anything else. Uh, when I you know when I work with athletes or when I talk to athletes, I should say, I could, I tell them, look, train to get strong and big, but if you want to maintain your body weight. That's a diet thing. So if I'm talking to a wrestler, for example, who has to make weight, your goal is to be as, as strong and muscular as possible at your current body weight. That means you're going to be lean, right? So body fat does nothing to help you with your vertical or very little, I should say. You need some body fat for health, but you know, if you're carrying you know, an extra, an additional, let's say 15 pounds of body fat, and let's say we lost that 15 pounds of body fat and gained it in, in muscle, you're going to be far more athletic. So the goal would be then to build muscle and be lean at the same time. And in terms of strength training, heavy weight training, totally fine. Yeah. Plyometrics, I would incorporate plyometrics 10 to 15 minutes at the beginning of your workouts to really uh, you know, bring that strength, that, that grinding strength to, to keep that more focus fast is, is the point. Um and, and you know, we do this with a lot of our programs in terms of frequency training. So uh, frequency builder. So there's trigger sessions in MAPS Anabolic. There's mobility sessions in performance. There's focus sessions in aesthetic. Um, and what you're talking about is a, is a skill. And that skill is something that you need to maintain throughout your training while you're strength training as well. So if, yes, you're... It, you know, there's going to be a little bit of uh, reprioritization in terms of like your body's now like adjusting to 
uh, this specific adaptation goal, which is like building this foundational overall strength, which you do need as an athlete, you need to be able to express that you need to be able to generate more power and force. Uh, and so that's something that you need to incorporate, but simultaneous to that, you do need to maintain the skill of vertical jump. So the, I would have that something as a priority in your active recovery day where you're, you know, really applying the skill of, of vertical jump and making sure that you, you know, have that kind of stability support with your, with your joints and you're able to generate that kind of fast twitch response. Uh, and so applying, you know, some kind of plyometrics through that on the, on the days in between, I would highly suggest. Yeah, very well said. I, I would, I'll be even more specific. I would actually follow our MAPS cardio program. Everywhere where we've programmed you to do cardio, that I would use that as your days of playing volleyball and or doing skills training that Justin's talking about. If you want specific exercises that are going to help your vertical, I think Paul Favritz, PJF Performance, is one of the best in the industry. Yep. I think he has a, a, a program called Vertical Code, and it has all kinds of skills training for your vert in there. Um, yep. You could you could kind of combine both of our programs. I would take the skills training for the vertical from him, and then I would apply it to our cardio program. Anywhere where cardio is programmed in that program, you're doing either skills training or playing volleyball. Yeah, Eric, have you ever done plyometrics before? Um, yeah. Okay. Not a ton of it. I've done uh, before getting the RGB bundle um, like two weeks ago. I was uh, bodybuilding.com. They have an app and they give you workouts on what you're trying to do. And some of them that I've done had lifting and plyo together. Okay. Well, okay. So just to, to be clear with plyos, oftentimes, I'm not familiar with the, with the bodybuilding.com program, but oftentimes uh, the way that they program plyos is not, ply, they're not plyometric. They're just making you jump and move to fatigue. Mm -hmm. So when you do your plyos, don't think I'm going to get a workout. Don't think I'm going to sweat. Your goal is to explode and jump as high as you can. Rest until you feel fully recovered and then do it again. You should not do it to fatigue. The second you do it to fatigue, now it becomes cardiovascular training. You're which training is, bad habits. Yeah, which point. is it's fine if you want more cardio, but if you're trying to get a higher vertical, you have to be able to practice it with, with maximal strength and power, which means you do one, so you jump in place as high as you can, and then you wait until you fully recover it and then do it again. And you're looking at maybe six reps of this, resting three minutes and then repeating it. That's what a plyo is. It's not jumping a bunch of times or jumping at the end of a circuit or whatever the way a lot of people do it. Eric, are you familiar with Paul, the guy I, I referred to? No, oh, I have not heard of that one before. Oh, okay. Oh, well, you yeah, need, he's you the best in the business. Go, go to PGAF Performance is his Instagram. I mean, and just go down the rabbit hole, dude. His Instagram feed is full of great. I think he's the best in the business when it comes to teaching plyometrics for vertical. And it, and he'll and he has examples all up and down for free on his Instagram of exercises that you could literally take. And it's the, the carry, he's specifically speaking to basketball, but the carryover to, to volleyball very is similar. very very similar. Mm -hmm. So those movements will benefit you the same way that it will benefit a basketball player. Go down the rabbit hole and look at his Instagram and check out all the stuff that he has. He has all kinds of incredible drills yeah. that I think you can pluck from there. And build it, and I didn't know you had our RGB, so you could follow like a maps performance and then build right. it in there. I think. Okay. All right, man. Ed, uh, I was just gonna say one, like I feel so the lifting I've done before, my arm swing when hitting, I feel when I'm like getting close to my peak of like I don't know if it's mobility or just too big. I think it's probably lack of mobility. I just feel like it gets slower. Yeah, I'm like not hitting as hard. Okay, yeah. so so um, so think of it this way, right? So let's say you gain an inch on your arms, okay? Let's, which is a lot, right? You you just built a ton of muscle on your arms. You're now swinging a different arm, and it requires uh, different movement patterns that you're not used to. So it's like when you watch a if you ever watch a dog uh, in the first six months of their life or nine months, they grow real fast and they're clumsy because they're not used to their body. So what you need to do is you need to practice the skills of volleyball way more than you lift weights so that the skills match the new size that you've built. Otherwise, what's going to happen is exactly what you said. You'll get bigger. You'll go try to do something that you did so well before, and it's going to feel awkward. That's what's happening. You're feeling very awkward with the way your movement is. So you need to spend way more time playing volleyball than you do lifting weights if that's your priority and practicing the skills that you're talking about. Well, and to, to add on to what you're saying, Sal, that means you you actually should potentially modify even our programs, right? 
So if if we and most are most of the programs you have right now have three foundational days. If volleyball is really a priority, you probably only need to be doing the one or two of those foundational days. Max, he's doing three to five days of volleyball. It says yeah. So, so. you you only need to be lifting one to two days a week. Here's the mistake that a lot of guys like you make is, and what Sal's alluding to is that you. You're, you're trying to get all big and buffed, and you're trying to play your sport, and what ends up happening is you're lifting in the gym almost as much as you... They're competing goals. Yeah, they're competing. And that and then that was, and, and you add in the fact that you're in a calorie surplus and you start to add weight, it totally hinders your volleyball. So yeah. if volleyball is this much of a priority where you're playing three to five times a week, you should only be lifting one to two days max right. in the gym. Right. And so take, take one of our programs... Follow follow one of the foundational days and then stick to your volleyball. And believe it or not, that's enough. You'll build muscle. You'll lean out too, which is great, which will only support your vertical and your volleyball play. Mm -hmm. Okay. So say I have like a slow week or in between sessions of volleyball that sometimes there's like one or two weeks um, between sessions. Um, that amount of lifting won't like stop. If I like, During that time, I'm lifting like four days a week, three days a week. Yeah, well, what I would do, if I was you and I was serious about volleyball and there's two weeks where there's only one or two games happening per week, I would still go to a court and I would practice my serves. I would practice, you know, uh, hitting over the net. I would practice my verticals. Now, if my goals were physique, then I would lift more on those days. So it's up to you. But if, you, if it's volleyball, then what you should do instead of lifting more is you go and you practice the skills of volleyball. It's hard. I want both. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the, does. this is a, you, but you you just you have to know that something has to give, right? So, whichever yeah. one you're going to lean into more, you're going to compromise the other one a little bit. That's just part of life. Like they're yeah. not. Uh, that's why bodybuilders aren't great volleyball players. <laughs> just, yeah. You know, Look. and that's why most volleyball players aren't great bodybuilders. You know, yeah. there's just they're uh, yep. they're, they're conflicted. Doesn't mean you can't be a jacked volleyball player. You can be a jacked volleyball player who's fit and looks good. But you're not going to be. That's the, always been me. Yeah, yeah. So you you're, you're going to have to kind of blend that a little bit. So I'm maybe maybe the you. middle maybe the middle ground is on those two week gaps is not four days a week of lifting. Maybe it's now you go to two days Dial, yeah. or three days of lifting, and then you play you do more of the vertical speed and, and plyometric work we're talking about. Yep. Dial in your nutrition, man. If your goal is is physique, like that's and you're trying to do that with your athletic pursuits. Yeah, like, lean out. Really Bro, lean out. If yeah. you've got any kind of muscle mass on your body and you just get lean, you'll feel like you look way bigger, bigger. Especially when you take your shirt off. Exactly. It's just it's a, it's the illusion, right? So okay. yep. I hate the whole counting calories and macros and all that, but yeah, apparently it yeah. sounds like I need to. Well, I got yeah. a buddy oh, who man. hates working but wants to be rich, but you know what I mean? <laughs> you got to do it. You got to fucking do it if you want to be rich. <laughs> so there's nothing else you can do. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks all for right, calling dude. in, Eric. Appreciate right. it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, want it all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then you get yeah, faced with the reality. Bro. You can't have it all. Well, especially I mean? these these physique per pursuits. It's like, you know, like you can't remove all of that that yeah. goes along with but it, especially I, the nutrition. I do think athletes need to understand, because there's a lot of young athletes that they, of course, you want to look a particular way, but then you want to perform well. And if you gain a bunch, and this is where the, the whole muscle-bound you know, myth came from. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, if you stop playing your sport, and then you gain 15 pounds of muscle. Dude, yeah, you're bigger and stronger, bro, but this, now you're, you're moving was, in a new body. I'm still fighting coaches over this. This yeah, was never, time. you know what? This wasn't a thing 20 years ago. We highlight these at these anomalies, okay? Like a like a you know, Doug pull up Reggie Bush cover of magazine. Yeah, he looks like a freaking amateur yeah. bodybuilder. Yeah, and yeah. he's just a freak of nature, and he's this running back, and yeah. you're just like, see, you can play football. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's like they point to like the most ridiculously genetically gifted. Yeah, but but we put them on covers of magazines right. that kids subscribe yeah. to, and they look at, and then we right. and we have Instagram where these guys only put their best pictures up, and then you get this distorted idea of athletes are jacked and dude. look this way, and it's like. No, this person is a total anomaly, and most people that are great at their sport are just great at their sport. They have they don't they don't look like yeah. yeah look at yeah. right. <laughs> hey, hey, I try as hard as I can to get ripped and big, and I do not like look like like yeah. that guy. He, yeah. he you, runs. You speed. know, it's funny when it comes the, to like fighting, especially too. I'm always I'm always betting on the guy that that doesn't look as good. Because <laughs> he's fucking serious. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Hey, hey, I'm hey gonna, just happened. I'm gonna the, counter the that. You last UFC. I'm fight. gonna counter that though. Looking, looking jacked keeps you out of fights. 
Uh, you know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, I disagree okay. with that. I disagree with that. Yeah. Uh, it depends. I, get, I, got, I don't know, dude. When you're when you're you the, got a big mouth, that's why. <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> yeah, you do. When you're a big Adam, dude, don't blame it on Big Jack. Hey, <laughs> when you when you when you are jacked and you walk in, okay, sure. There's there is a percentage of people that are like, oh, bro, God, you don't. exude extreme cockiness. That's why. It's not because you're jacked, bro. It's because when you walk in, everybody feels it. Uh, dude, Look at this fucking guy over this here. This dude. What's he so confident? Everybody, about? there's always a guy trying to size you up, bro. Always. <laughs> Always be there's, there's half dude. the group that goes like I don't want to fuck with that. Then there's a couple guys who are like I want to test that guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. yeah, yeah what's it's up? true. But yeah. I mean, it's it, we got to keep making this point with athletes. It's like you, the yeah. skill of your of your sport is the most important thing that you practice. Yeah. I remember as a kid yeah. doing judo. I was I was young. I was 15 doing judo. I took a summer off, and I was just, this one. I really was squatting and deadlifting. I gained like 15 pounds of lean body mass. Went back to judo thinking I was going to crush everybody, yeah. and I felt awkward because I was. Different. My body well, wasn't this, moving the same. This is a very common thing. I think that your your young athletes in their in their early to mid twenties go. I went through this. Mm -hmm. I struggled with. I loved basketball. I love basketball so much. I played every day. Every day, yeah. I played at least an hour or more of basketball every day, and on weekends, three hours. I loved the sport, yeah. but I wanted to be jacked so bad. And I couldn't figure out for the life of me why I couldn't do that. I just I couldn't possibly eat enough calories and let my body recover enough to build the muscle. And as soon as I cut back on basketball, I started to put size on. Mm -hmm. And then then it came down to that, like, well, how bad do I want to be the jack yep. guy? Yeah. And and I realized that it doesn't mean I have to quit basketball altogether. It just means that it cannot be that high of a priority in yep. my life. If look, I, yeah, you just gotta look at it just like we've we've talked about this before, like your video game character avatar, right? Like you have your different skill attributes. Yeah. And you they give you a hundred points. Take away from one, yeah. you, you can increase the other, but you can't do both. Yeah. You don't have all of the power. You don't have yeah. the yeah. genie code uh to to basically And give this you all is that. why they think they can do both. Because there's there's these anomalies that are highlighted. That's literally the 0.01% of the world. Yeah, but they, they see that and they think, well, he he's done it. Yeah. Why can't I do it? Yeah. And it's just like, no, man. I, I wish there was a Konami code for life, though, right? And you get all the up, 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 down, down, left, right. Yeah. Oh, strong, smart. I keep my hair, too. Look handsome. <laughs> I keep my hair. I got perfect kids. My wife lets me go out with my friends. Yeah, no, no back <laughs> knee or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Our next caller is Tyler from California. What's up, Tyler? How can we help you? What's up, guys? How are we doing? Good, man. Good, dude. Appreciate you uh, all the content you guys put out. I'm a, a trainer in San Diego. Listen to you guys for about three years now. So, oh, good deal. Love San Diego. What a great. Oh, yeah. That's a great town, man. Love that place. Yeah, great weekend for Fourth of July. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, so, my question, I'll just hop right into it. Is uh, I, I always hear about the like I'm, I did your guys' anabolic because I like to every once in a while try different programs and, and get myself out of you know my my scent, like you guys always say, you know, similar exercises you're used to have uh, creatures of habit. But my question was, when is it, or could you elaborate on when it's superior or appropriate to train in one rep range solely for the, for an amount of time, let's say like three to four weeks, like linear uh, periodization or switching um, the style, every workout where you're hitting every rep range, each workout consistently, mm -hmm. you know, starting with your big lift and then progressing through the workout into a hypertrophy range and then more of a endurance finisher range. Cause I always find myself going back and forth with this with clients, especially, you know, those two, two days a week, three days a week, women or, or men, but it always, I always go back and forth with it. And then I tried anabolic and I saw how it was the linear. And then I, you know, I, I see research all the time with daily um, individualization periodization. So I was just hoping you guys can maybe elaborate on that or Tyler. Okay. It's a good question. Let me ask you, how long have you been a trainer? Uh, since July of 2020. Okay. So a couple of years, what percentage of your success with your clients would you say is psychological? And in other words, working with your clients, mental states, psychological states versus just the, the, the mechanistic aspects of the workout and diet. Like, would you say it's more mental or would you say it's just a hey, follow the, you know, color in the, the numbers? As far as like my success with them? Yeah. Yeah. Like how much? I, how, I, think, how it's, much? I think it's definitely 50 50. I think I'm really good at also having that understanding because my biggest thing was, you know, I can't program a certain, you know, if it's a heavy squat day and they come in and I start talking to them and get an idea of how they're feeling or they didn't eat. You got I'm it. Like I can't, you know, I don't want to just you still it. do it. You know? No, you, you got know? it 100%. And you're an early trainer, but you've already figured that out, which is really good. So here's my second question the mental state and the the feel required for sets of one or two reps versus sets of eight to 12 reps, is it different or is it the same? Drastically different. Drastically mm -hmm. different. So this is the main reason why we like 
people training in blocks rather than switching up every workout, mainly, especially with clients. Now, if you're super experienced and you can switch your mental state and the feel of how you train or whatever very quickly, which if you're experienced, you can probably do that. That's fine. But for most people, when I would train clients in one rep range, it would take me a week before they'd really figure out how to get that rep, how, how to, to really get into that position, how to yeah. focus. So I like to train them for three weeks in that same rep range, not mix it up all the time. It's a very different feel. So that's the main reason why we do it that way. I also like to, I mean, because to Sal's point is, and I, what I was going to ask you was, is this for you or is this for your client? Because the answer is different. Like if you're an advanced lifter and you've been a trainer, to Sal's point, you totally can mix this up every day. You have the skill sets. You already understand the benefits of lifting heavy, of doing higher rep, lower rep. You're not going to, you know, better than to neglect one. You're smart enough to follow a program, even though you're a trainer, like you, you could, you could go play with that. I do that all the time. I don't technically follow our training blocks the way we write them all the time because I have the skill sets to weave in and out. And I like to sometimes, but I would always keep a client in these blocks because of the teaching purpose. Like I like when I'm training in a phase, whether it be an eight to 12 rep phase or in a, you know, or a strength phase where I'm training three to five. I like to be able to coach to the adaptation we're focused on for the next three weeks, Susie, we're focused on strength. You know, notice that you feel this. Do you notice that? Like, Hey, this is how I want your breathing. This is the way I want your mindset when you're lifting. And we're being consistent every time she comes in versus you know, she in a workout, she's got all these different rep ranges, and one day we're training one way, the next day we're switching it up. Really hard for her to grasp what is really working for her body. Is it like those the plyometric stuff that he taught me yesterday, or is it the, the strength training block that he just did tomorrow? And like, you know, so she's not she's not able to make that connection yet because she doesn't have your type of experience, even though all the research shows that it's pretty even, right? If you were to be somebody who changed it up every single day versus somebody who's who ran in a phase for three weeks. We know that what the research says, it's pretty similar. It maybe gets edged out a little bit by switching it up. But the problem with that, it's hard to coach and educate somebody on what they're focusing on when you're, when you're constantly changing their, their routine up. Yeah. And it just, it's, it's a different feel, man. When, when, when I'm training myself for a workout where I'm doing, you know, sets of three reps, it's very different mentally than when I'm doing workouts where I'm doing, you know, 10 to 15 reps. It's focused different on the body. I'm more focused on the movement, I'm summoning my strength differently. Versus Slowing when, down the tempo. Yeah, but for, versus when I'm, you know, 10 to 15 reps, I'm focusing on the contraction of the muscle and the stretch and the pump. It's very different. And that mental state is something that has to be trained and you have to know how to get into it. And most clients takes you two or three workouts before they're like, oh, I got this. I, I, I know how this works. So it doesn't make sense to do Monday's workout, you know, two to three reps. And then Thursday you come back and we're doing 15 reps. Like the person just, it just isn't that effective at teaching that client the difference between those two different training styles. So training blocks work better. And then to Adam's point, you really figure out your body. Like I don't, how am I going to know which style of training causes more joint pain over three or four weeks or which style of training my body likes yeah. better or, you know, that kind of stuff. If I'm always mixing it up, right? It's just more tangible metrics to go back on. Like, it's really hard to tease that out when you're um, experimenting with a lot of different uh, adaptations at once. So uh, to, to be able to like, just have them um, simplify it. And I think that, I don't know, as a new trainer, I think um, we're directed a lot more in the experience of it and trying to cater to uh, the client's expectation coming in versus, you know, really sort of uh, guiding and directing the simplicity of what really works. Uh, and so it's, it's tempting, it's tempting to make it this like crazy, you know, fun, engaging, like I did all this crazy shit today uh, with you versus like, you know, like the, the, you know, the meat and potatoes of like really getting to, to the heart of like getting them successful. Yeah. Tyler, do you have, uh, at risk of, of, en of enraging Adam, do you have uh, map maps, prime yeah, and prime pro? I got, I got, <laughs> my, yeah. guy, my guy, hey. my guy, he, hey. you know, what's funny. I played, uh, I did a lot of, I kind of have a little bit more of Justin's background. I, I played with D one football, and, um, sports a lot. You oh, know? Cool. So I came from that kind of background. Cool. So I know that I get the mobility. I get the, I, especially when I heard him go off on that one first time, I was like, okay, I'm not definitely. <laughs> hey, I wonder <laughs> if people it. lie now too. Yeah, I got it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, dude. You know, uh, you're going to get that every yeah, time someone comes on here now. Uh, no, no, good deal. I, I hope we answered your question. I hope that gave you some clarification there.
Yeah, I, I just I, I always break it down because I found, especially with women, it was really hard for them to consistently be eating to where they are be able to do a heavy workout the entire duration of, you know, for an hour. So I always was splitting it up to maybe like this month, we're going to focus just on your squat strength and your overhead press strength. And yeah, those were our I focuses. See. I got that program. And but then after that, I have a movement patterns and trying to train. And that's more intuitive based on how the workout's going. Okay. But at least I'm programming. So you're those. going on the skill of the actual compound lifts. Like and you're teasing out like one to two lifts. You're really focusing yeah, and, on those. Yeah, yeah. That's not a bad, I, I, this, I, not a bad I love yeah. that, but I'm going to help you communicate this to clients. Okay. So clients could care less about what you're doing unless you connect some kind of result that they're going to get from it. So I could say to them, hey, this month we're going to focus on getting your squat strength way up. Okay, what does that mean to the average person? Mm -hmm. It means nothing. So what I would say is, now here's what you can expect from that. You're probably going to get a rounder butt. You're probably going to get some more lower back development. I think your metabolism is going to speed up as, uh, as well. Uh, we'll probably find that you're burning about 50 to 100 more calories a day, which means you can eat more and maintain the same body fat or eat the same and get leaner. So that's what's going to come about from getting your squat stronger. You have to attach the results or what they get out of what you're doing because they're not trainers. They, they don't, people, uh, you know, oh yeah, I like to get stronger in a squat. Okay, well, what does that mean? Here's what it means for you, Mrs. Johnson. So make sure you communicate it that way because it'll, it'll make all the difference in the world for them to comply. Otherwise, they're going to ask you questions like, okay, well, yeah, I, okay, my squat went up, but I still want to develop my butt, right? And then you got to explain, oh, well, this is going to help develop your butt. So present it that way. It'll, it'll, make, it'll be way more effective and you'll get your clients to comply much more effectively that way. Cool. Yeah, appreciate it. All right, awesome, brother. Man. Thanks for calling Thank you, in. Tyler. Yeah, Thanks for having me on. You got it. I like that kid. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I mean, that that early He's on. Good question. Yeah, yeah, I mean, two years is, is yeah, a new good, trainer. Yeah, good question. I think, yeah, and and I, I very thought-provoking at that early on in his career. And what he was doing is not bad. No. Right. After he explained kind of how he programs, like, I mean, it, he's definitely uh, heading down the right path for sure. Yeah, a lot of people, I mean, the, the, for people who are trainers to get this, but people who are thinking about being a trainer, um, a lot of what you do is is consideration of your client, how they're going to comply. Are they going to enjoy it? Is this something that they want to do? Mm -hmm. Is this going to work for them? Like you could have the best routine in the world on paper, but if the client doesn't like it, either you learn to get them to like it mm -hmm. or you got to change it. And, and that's just the reality because at the end of the day, it's all about consistency and about getting people to follow through. That's the bottom line. Our next caller is Trevor from Wisconsin. Trevor, what's happening, man? Hey, how are you guys? Good. How can we help you? Good. Uh, I had a question. My, my general question is on supplementation. And uh, one of the things I've been struggling with, um, just for some background, is I'm 31. I'm a dad. Um, I've been listening to you guys for years, and I've been doing the fundamentals. Uh, I prioritize protein. I keep up on whole foods diet. I'm very focused on strength training, water, you know, sleep the best I can. I have a pretty stressful job and um, all around, I feel like I'm kind of captured the fundamentals through my course of the past couple of years. Uh, I've been at my highest about 280 pounds, I'm about 230 right now, 235. Um, I've been planning to increase my metabolism with my exercise and my wife has made comments recently about, you know, you're trying to gain weight, but your clothes fit better and you're looking better. And so I think the, the trade-offs I'm starting to see have been quite beneficial where I've been kind of targeting to get further up metabolically and uh, more muscle mass. And one of the things that kind of sticks out in my head all the time as I listen to the program is all the amazing plethora of partners and supplementation that uh, you guys work with. And I've been thinking about, you know, am I missing something with uh, maybe some general supplements, uh, some performance supplements? Are there things that are health, wellness, vitality in that category that I could use to benefit? And then should I just go into the world with uh, a general understanding of how I feel? Or should I practice, uh, you know, trying something, seeing how it works and then shifting from there? Or should I look towards the more targeted approach that seems to be more prevalent in the market where you guys are pushing to look at certain tests and then have the test and the analysis? to then make better decisions when supplementing it. It's just a, a huge market and a huge category that I'm not sure how to navigate. Uh, I currently just use protein as a, a way to hit my protein targets and then creatine. Uh, I listed I've used a multivitamin before, but I don't regularly take a multivitamin. I know your thoughts on that, but 
Uh, kind of afraid to ask you, Sal, on where to start, but <laughs> to give it a whirl. I, sure. I got about 50 supplements. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, first yeah, off. I was, I was actually thinking about like, the, I was thinking about, you know, uh, fear and loathing. I've never seen the movie, but like Raul, like the, the drug suitcase. Yeah. Yeah. And Sal's got the <laughs> yeah, 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 that's me, dude. <laughs> I'll hey. tell you, save your money, bro. Yeah. Save your money. Uh, he yeah. he said it. I was protein. actually going to say that. Sa- sa- save your money. I mean, we're, we're about to head into some shitty times in the next six months or so, and everybody should be saving their money. It, you are... You are <laughs> the fuck I mean, out of everybody. It's fucking true. Winter is coming. Yeah, yeah. Winter is Buy coming. guns. Yeah. Buy guns. Yeah, we're, we're in a recession, bro. It's uh, Times are going to get tight. Unless, unless you're rich. If you're rich, you got money to throw around, then why not? Let's yeah. play with some supplements. But you're... you're, you're and my, by the way, all my partners are going to hate me for saying this, but... You, you, you're doing the things that we talk about and we've been talking about since the beginning of the show well before we had partners and sponsors with the show. And that's th- those are the big rocks, man. Th- that's what's going to move the needle. That's what's going to make you feel better, look better, stronger. Now, does that mean that you could not potentially benefit from some supplements? Sure, maybe there's some somewhere you're lacking, and and if you feel, but if you're not, if you don't have the signs, like if you're not telling me, like Adam, I just my energy levels dip, or I've got I've got this chronic issue going on if you don't have any of that um then i would tell you you're probably doing pretty damn good and and stick to what you're doing unless you've got this disposable income you want to play with and try those different i mean creatine beneficial you're already taking that protein to hit your protein targets beneficial you're already doing that those are the mega ones the only other thing i would say and you already said it is go get tested which there's you can get very inexpensive testing through uh dr cabral and i can't remember the link maybe doug can find that for me before uh, we hang up here, but isn't there a link they could go to where they could find the test? Well, testing? go join the free forum to start. Okay. Go get free information there so first. So it's, it's, it's MP Holistic Health on uh, Facebook. But nonetheless, do testing because if you have a nutrient deficiency or let's say you have a little bit of high of heavy metals, like that will make a huge difference to solve that problem versus just taking general supplements uh, that you'll find out there. So I would say, I always recommend this to people is, is get tested, see if you're lacking anything because that makes a big difference or if you need to supplement to help with any toxicities uh, uh, in your body, like heavy metals, and then creatine and protein uh, are very, use- very, very useful for most people. Everything else is like you know, it's like the cherry on top. You know, okay, so I, I have a green juice when I don't eat a lot of vegetables. I'll take that sometimes. I like a pre-workout before I work out because it gets me hyped up. And to be honest with you, I like the feeling of of taking caffeine. So that's cool too. Um, you know, I like the gold juice at night, uh, to, for relaxation, but also it tastes good and it's fun. But do I need all those things? No, I don't. Like if I eat a healthy diet, really good diet and I work, you know, and I, I stay consistent with my exercise, unless I had a nutrient deficiency, I wouldn't need anything. That's really, that's the, that's the hundred percent. Yeah. Truth. Keep in mind, he has a disposable income and he gets a lot of that shit for free. So yep. he takes all that stuff all the time. Yep. So that's and, half of why that bad. And, ba- and based off of your perfectly healthy looking beard, I'd say you're probably doing great. Look at that beard. That's like the most <laughs> perfect beard I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. You look pretty it's, healthy, it's, bro. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. And, and and that was what I did. You know, I hired a trainer when I first started. I, I read, uh, what's the Lane Norton's Fat Loss Forever. Yeah. So I, I took a very like analytical approach to it and I actually fixed nutrition way before I got into the gym. So Perfect. I fixed nutrition. I started getting dialed in there. I started setting up appropriate, you know, targets. I'm over 3000 calories right now and I'm oh, seeing yeah. body composition changes. So um, awesome. I, I, my, my, my daughter's two and a half and I'm, I'm trying not to get out angled at the bus stop when she turns five and I'm at kindergarten dropping her off. So, um, <laughs> good dad, good I'm, dad. Yeah. I'm, I know that, I know that this is going to take years and, and Sal, you made a point there. Uh, I, I have tried a pre-workout, but, um, I currently work out at night after I put my daughter to bed and, yeah, you're not and I go to the gym about seven or eight. So I can't do 200 milligrams of caffeine. I looked on Legion's website and I thought like, is it worth doing non-stimulant pre-workout for Man. you know any reason? You but, know what? You, you know it'll it, make a big it, difference. Uh, drink some uh, electrolytes. So you can put some salt in your sure. water or drink LMNT. That's a good company we work with. Very inexpensive. Put that in some cold water. Drink some before your workout. During your workout. As long as your nutrition was good during the day, you're fine. But and you're it, right. You don't want caffeine at night. If your sleep is fine, then I wouldn't mess with anything either. But you, so one of the, I have a hard time working out after five. It disrupts the way I sleep. If you don't have a problem coming down, then I won't recommend anything to you. But that might be something you pay attention to is like, oh man, when I work out, do I have a hard time falling asleep? And then things like the, and I know you mentioned on there, the CBD, like that might be, have some benefit to you. A mellow has been life changing for me. Part of the reason why it was because I was deficient there. So supplementing with that was a major difference for me for falling asleep at night. So 
there's some things like that. But you, I mean, when you led with that, you didn't lead with problems you're having. Uh, you're going to hear from us that you're, you're, I think you're doing a hell of a job and stick with the big rocks that you're doing. Totally. But if you notice something that isn't right where you're having trouble or something chronic or you get tested like Sal says and there's something obviously off, then, then there's some value for sure yep. in supplementing there. Yep. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't um, – like I said, I'm 31. I, I've got blood work done recently. It looked good. Um, I, I don't take any medications for anything for any reason other than maybe like an occasional ibuprofen or something. So um, I eat whole foods and just lift weights, and uh, that's, you know, that's pretty much it. You know, it's, there's no real issue I'm pointed towards. I was just thinking, you know, there's, there's so many great partners you guys work with and so many products that sound attractive. It's like you don't want to – <laughs> buy into the temptation just buying a bunch of shit and just taking it you know we, we appreciate the um, support yeah. though <laughs> yeah. well, except except magic spoon magic magic spoon is delicious and yeah. i do eat magic spoon but <laughs> yeah. um i did uh i did have one supplemental uh question to the, the original no pun intended um i i recently moved out of the gym that i was in where i had the equipment uh that my trainer and i had developed the programming around and now that I moved in the rural area, I'm uh, out where I live. There's a little small gym there with just some free weights, dumbbells, barbells. And I, I think I know the answer, but I'm ready to join the MAPS uh, program team here. And so is is anabolic where I probably start for yep. a couple of days a week? Yep. We'll send, that, okay. we'll send that to you. That's yeah, the yeah. one, man. You'll love oh, that one. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks. Yeah. yeah that's, uh, I don't, I've done a lot of the online videos of uh, the, the priming and uh, mobility work, but I don't own, you know, prime, prime pro, but I'm not a trainer. So I get a pass, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, hey, Boy, that's the theme right now. It's Yo, hey, this time. Maps anabolic is going to blow you away. That's yeah, going to yeah. blow. You got all yeah. the stuff dialed in. Yeah, bro. I'm excited. For you. I'm excited for you. You got your diet yeah. dialed in sleep. I mean, watch when you follow anabolic. Yeah. So. Your strength's going to go through the roof. Yeah. yeah. Follow anabolic and get oh. in that, get in that Dr. Cabral's forum. So the MP holistic health forum in there, I think there's just lots of good free information. He's on there. Yep. Uh, he goes, he does live questions. I think every other week in there. So, uh, I think there's some value in there. Maybe you'll pick up some good tips, but it's free. So join that, get in there and follow anabolic, bro. Can't wait to hear from you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thanks so much. And, and you guys are such an inspiration. I, I've learned so much about like how to handle relationships and how to, you know, do just business, the intentionality you guys have when you talk to each other and just the, the bond you guys have, it just, it bleeds over into other areas of life. So I know the fitness is what we're focused on, but there's so many other things we can learn from you guys, just by the way you guys talk to each other and carry yourselves. So appreciate it. I uh, really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Thank man. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks guys. You got it. Yeah, you know what's funny about supplements is if you have a, a, a genuine nutrient deficiency, supplements are a life changer. Life oh, yeah. changer. If your vitamin That's when D you is low, feel it. Yeah. if your zinc is low, if your magnesium like yours, Adam, was low, yeah. you supplement with those things and it's it's like, oh my God, this really solves so many problems. That's when supplements are super important. Otherwise, yeah. it's convenience and it can help. And I, I, Creatine I like, creatine across the board. Seems very beneficial. Protein powder seem to be very valuable for a lot of people. But other than that, I mean, they're just fun. They're yeah. fun things to add. And if your diet, sleep, and exercise are off, throwing supplements on top of that stuff. A lot of novelty help. out there. Yeah. Yes. So it's a, to Adam's point, really, if you have a you know, if you want to experiment and you want to look at it like that, like it's something that's like, you know, it's a fun idea and I want to see what it does, and you got expendable uh, disposable yeah. income, you know, go for it. That's but, how I look at it. If you if you have the money to spend and it's not a big deal for you to throw a couple hundred bucks here and there to, to try and stuff like that, then sure, why not? But if you if you're not suffering from anything chronic, if you've you've done blood work and been tested and everything looks good you're carrying the big rocks i'm never going to tell that person to go buy a supplement no. Man, mm. it does, why yeah. and i take yeah. i take all the supplements i do because i have a problem <laughs> <laughs> i have a problem that's the reason that'd be like me promoting everybody to eat cheese yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well you yeah. all you also have disposable income and it's shit. fun so that's it's okay to say that and to to encourage don't encourage my addiction. No, I mean listen, I mean <laughs> I, and I've gone through these phases sure. too. You, if you have the disposable, why not play with your health? You yeah. Why not try tweaking things and oh, if I add a little bit more sodium yeah. in my diet, oh wow, I notice the difference. In my problem. oh, if I add a little yeah, bit I'm not going to turn tricks to get supplements, right? It's just <laughs> <laughs> not not until it gets real hard no, yeah. any, anymore. I need anymore, some creatine, anymore. baby. <laughs> Give me some of that creatine, baby. Look, if you like our show you got to head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have so many guides that can help you out, and they're all free. Mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. 
how do I incorporate cardio and not lose muscle? I've seen people do this before where they'll start to lose the sharpness of their muscles or they'll start to lose the sculpt a little bit. And that's disheartening. But if you do it right, then you minimize that muscle loss or that metabolism slowdown. In fact, if you do it right, you can actually speed up your metabolism at the same time that you build stamina and endurance. You just have to be able to kind of program it properly. And the way to program it improperly is just to go do as much cardio as you can for as long as you can. Right.